All right, so our um, learning objective for today is to be able to um, develop and use a model that shows how global winds affect Earth's climate. So let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen with you, a new screen. And this is just a review from yesterday. You're gonna find that to help you with your note taking, Ms. Neville's going to highlight information that you need to write down. Let me repeat that. Anything that Ms. Neville writes, um, highlights, that's what you need to write in your notes, okay? So it's gonna be important that um, I give you time and all of those things to get your notes done, but it's also important for us to know that if you don't get your notes done in time, our lessons are recorded and posted to Schoology as soon as they're ready, okay? So let's look at the Coriolis effect. And remember, this is just a review from yesterday. If you don't have these notes from yesterday, you will need to write them down. It's important for us to know that with the Coriolis effect, that just describes how winds on the earth move. The Coriolis effect describes how the earth is constantly spinning. One second. How our earth is constantly spinning. Okay, and the earth is round. So because our earth is constantly spinning and round, it causes the winds as they move across our earth not to go straight, but to go curved. Yes, remember those winds wrap around our earth. And because our earth is spinning, it causes those winds to spin as well, okay? So we wanna remember from yesterday, the Coriolis effect tells us that Earth's winds move in a curved pattern. Earth's winds move in a curved pattern. These are from notes from yesterday, so I'm gonna go on. If you didn't get these notes, please watch the most recent recorded lesson um, that's in our pink folder on Schoology. So we're going to start talking about global winds or continue talking about global winds. So in your notes, our new heading needs to say global winds. Just a reminder that Earth's winds move in a curved pattern. Earth's winds move in a curved pattern. Later on today, Miss Neville will be putting this picture on Schoology so that you can complete it in your notes. As for right now, you just want to leave a spot to draw this picture in your notes because um, you won't have time to draw it during our live session today. Another important global wind is the polar jet stream. Another important global wind is the polar jet stream. That name tells us a lot about that wind. Polar means that's where it comes from the polar climate zone. So that means that gust, that strong ribbon of wind moves from the polar region to other parts of our world. It's also important for us to know that um, the jet is the fastest aircraft that known to man, that man have, has created. And so it tells about the speed of this wind. Yes, it blows very fast. And just like a stream of water, that polar jet stream, that polar jet stream helps us to um, understand that that wind really looks like a stream of water almost. It's a thin ribbon of air that moves. The polar jet stream is so important because, let me highlight, the polar jet stream is so important because it brings those cooler temperatures from the polar climate zone. It brings them down to other parts of the United States. And that wind is not only colder, but it's also got some water in it. Yes, it brings precipitation and moisture to areas that are usually more dry. Areas like the Midwestern United States, OK, the Dakotas and all of those places. We're also going to see 
or not Dakotas, but Arizona and Nevada, places like that that are extremely dry, that polar jet stream dips down in that area and brings um, precipitation, rain, sometimes snow, and cooler temperatures to that place. So it's extremely important. I'm going to give you three minutes to finish writing down these notes. If you have time to start on this picture, it needs to be colorful. You definitely may. If you don't have time to finish this picture today, I'm going to put this picture on Schoology so that you can draw it in your notes and finish it there. Okay, please take some time, three minutes to finish this drawing. Take about 30 more seconds to finish up your notes. Miss Neville's about to go on. Okay, so let's go on. So the jet stream is very finicky or picky. We want to remember how heat moves. When we're talking about heat, heat will always move, remember, from a warmer place to a cooler place. So if a jet stream is extremely cold, it won't come near very hot temperatures. 
So we want to make sure we remember any extremely warm temperatures keep the jet stream from dipping too far south. OK, so the question becomes how would this jet stream and how it moves, where it goes, how would that be affected by the movement or by the superheating of our Earth because of global warming? Turn your mics on and let me know. Would the jet stream want to leave the Arctic if it was really, really hot like it is today? So the answer there is no. OK, that jet stream is not going to want to come down into a very hot area. I know right now it's very cold, but we've experienced some extremely warm winters as the years continue. And the reason why is because of that greenhouse effect working too well. Too much heat from the sun is being trapped onto our Earth and it's making our Earth superheated. Take some time to just write down what you see there um, in the that's highlighted. OK, we're going to go on. So let's talk about why that happens. And whatever you see Miss Neville draw here, you're going to want to draw as well. Please in your notes, if you would please write as your new heading, illustrating the movement of the polar jet stream. Illustrating the movement of the polar jet stream. So let's say we have a large parcel of land here, okay? This is actually a picture of some land. If you can draw it better, please do, okay? So I'm gonna label this as land. Uh oh, we want green, please. Okay, so what we'll find here, what we'll find here is that at the top of this land, we're going to have, above this land, we're going to have that polar region up here, the Arctic. So remember, that's the birthplace of that jet stream. So that jet stream is going to dip down. Oh, it's going to go back up. Oh, oh my goodness. And then it's going to run home. Let's talk about why. What causes that jet stream to not dip any further south? We want to remember that heat, we can think of heat as a bit of a bully. So heat from the south, heat will keep that jet stream from dipping too far down. It's actually gonna force that jet stream to stay as far north as possible. It's gonna cause that jet stream to stay as far north as possible. 
It's not going to dip down very low. So in our notes, let's write a star statement here in purple. And a star statement's a very important fact we don't want to forget. Heat forces the polar jet stream to remain closer to the polar climate zone. Take some time to finish drawing this and writing your notes here that are in purple. Um, Ms. Neville will go on in two minutes. Miss Neville is about to move on. So because our jet stream is absent and you don't have to write down anything here, because our jet stream is absent, what's happening around our world? Yeah. The 2020 California wildfires that we saw on the news, um, 
a lot of those had a lot to do with the fact that because California has become so warm, the jet streams from the polar region won't dip down to bring cooler temperatures and precipitation. That means this hot ground here is now superheated. It's dry and it acts as kindling to um, spark a fire from the overheating from the sun. So these fires are directly tied to a lot of things. One of those things being the absence of the polar jet stream. So the question becomes, does the jet stream, does um, our weather, what happens on our earth, is the polar jet stream important? Absolutely. Now, let's talk about your assignments that you have. Let me make sure we're not. Yeah, let's make sure we write this down in our notes, please. So. Yellow, please, thank you. So the jet stream's absence, that's our um, last heading for today. We need to make sure we understand that without the polar jet stream being present, certain parts of the United States receive little to no precipitation. Because of that, that causes that land to become extremely superheated and there cause, there's issues that happen because of that. Please finish writing this down. You have about 60 seconds. Okay, so let's talk about your assignments that you have for today. And remember, none of our assignments today are going to be uh, graded assignments that are assigned today, but you have had plenty of assignments. You have had plenty of assignments that you needed to complete. You have had plenty of assignments that you needed to complete this week. And I wanted to give you a break today by not adding more graded assignments. There's just going to be some pictures that you're going to be drawing in your notes today. Two, to be precise. Let's talk about what you're going to be doing today. I've shared my screen with you. In our new hot pink folder, week 17, measuring climate and severe weather systems, we're going to find that you should have already completed Bill Nye the Science Guy Climate, there's some notes here you should have added. Wherever you see the um, icon with the pencil there, those are notes that you're going to be adding to your notebook. OK, there's our live lessons here, our live lessons. And today you'll also be adding a picture to your notes. Called global understanding global winds air masses. If you would please take some time right now. And in your notebook, write down this heading. Uh oh. Write down this heading. 
understanding global air masses. Please write this in your notes. Understanding global air masses, um, global winds, air masses. And you're going to take a full page up today in your notebook, drawing the following picture. You're going to be drawing this picture and writing this chart in your notes. This is going to help you to be successful tomorrow. So you'll have a little bit of working knowledge, just a little bit of introduction to what an air mass is. Um, so tomorrow's lesson will go a lot smoother, OK? You'll be drawing this, these two things into your notes. Um, then I'm about to, as soon as class ends, also add that jet stream picture there. And you'll also need to put that in your notebook as well. Are there any questions before I dismiss you today?